Hey, what's happening, guys? We've done some videos in the past about boost and buck converters, and we did a, a series on making your own. Those are in my basic electricity and electronics playlist. So if you're unfamiliar with the theory behind boost and buck con converters, excuse me, just have a look at that playlist and you'll find those videos. But basically, uh, let me move these out of the way. To give you a basic idea, Let's start with a buck converter. We have our power supply, battery, whatever. Then we have some sort of switch, an inductor, and our load. Now, between the switch and the inductor, we have a reverse bias diode like that. And we have a capacitor over here not just for smoothing, but it also acts as a sort of energy storage. Now, the switch here is generally a MOSFET, but for simplicity's sake, when we're showing the circuit, we just call it a switch, because that's really all it is. It's a switch. So that's our buck converter. Now, if we do a boost converter, it's kind of the same thing. We have an inductor, then a diode, then our load like that. And what we've changed is we put the switch in the middle. We still have our capacitor over here. So if I can zoom out here, well, maybe I can just move these around a little bit. Now let's zoom out too. Okay. So there's our buck and there's our boost converter. So you can see the components are exactly the same what we've done is we've changed the position of the switch and the diode. In one way, we buck the voltage down. In the other way, we boost the voltage up. And it all has to do with the inductor. And it's wanting to resist the change in current. Now, a capacitor, we have capacitors here. Well, they store energy in an electric field. An inductor stores energy in a magnetic field. And when that magnetic field is broken down, that's when these things go to work. So if we look at the commercial versions, this is a buck converter. And this is a boost converter. And you can see, you know, they look very similar. Now, uh, this one has a potentiometer for control and this one has switches so there's there's a little bit of smartness going on there with that but the basic circuit is the same there's our inductor there's our inductor there's our diode our diodes hiding under the heat sink here there is our switch our switch is hiding under the heat sink here so you can see how they are very much the same now we all know you don't get something for nothing, right? So when we buck the voltage down, our trade-off is the current goes up. But if we boost our voltage up, unfortunately the trade-off is the current goes down. So if I power this little uh, boost converter up from a, a 12 volt power supply. You see we're getting 12.7 volts, 12.6 volts on the output there. And I can adjust it and I have it adjusted for 20, I mean, I'm sorry, we have, we're getting 12.6 volts on the input and I'm getting 24, I'm putting 24 volts on the output by adjusting that. So if we attach a load to it, make sure I get these in the right hole so nothing untowards happens. There we go. So now you can see we've loaded, 
we have loaded the uh, the input and we're getting about 12 and a half volts out of the input and we've also loaded the output and you can see we're getting 24 volts out of the output now if I increase the current draw on the output it's just going to die because we've traded voltage for current or in this case we've traded current for voltage let's put this on the oscilloscope and take a look at the waveform and we can see what the frequency of that switching is okay we're ready to take a look at this on the scope you can see I've got our ground connection hooked up there and we're going to probe the input first so I'm connecting to the input and let's rotate up and look at the scope so we can focus there real nice okay so we are at five volts per division so there's five ten twelve volts now I'm gonna change over pardon the bounciness there I'm sorry about that I'm gonna change over and we're gonna probe the output here okay and I'll have to adjust the vertical and we're gonna zoom up now we're at 10 volts per division so there's 10 20 and that's about 24 volts you can see there the mean is 23.2 volts now one thing we can do here let's see we've got channel one we'll couple that AC and if I can zoom in on this enough there we can see the noise and the ripple from this pretty cool okay what we're looking at now is the inductor and if we come in here you can actually see the inductor working and you can see the inductor frequency is about one megahertz pretty cool huh I zoom up they give us a better view no not really so there you go a little bit about boost converters trade your current for more voltage if you don't have a high current draw load these things can be incredibly useful so I hope you enjoyed if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all my patrons that's it i'm out peace